Hello everybody, here I've got some chemicals that were originally intended for water analysis but nobody needs them anymore so I need to figure out what I can do with them. If we check the label, we can see on the label that this actually contains some mercury. So I need to figure out a way to extract the mercury and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. There are two different kinds of mercury solutions. This is a solution of mercury thiocyanate. In the other right here we have a solution of mercury sulfate in sulfuric acid. So I will try to extract these separately. We are going to start with the mercury thiocyanate solution. So the first thing that we need to figure out is which of these vials actually contains the mercury thiocyanate solution. I'm assuming it's these two vials but I want to actually confirm that. So here we've got the test tube that might contain the mercury thiocyanate solution. And to test for that we're going to take a drop of that and put it on this piece of copper metal and see what happens. Here we have a drop of the solution. And now I've put it on the copper. And now let's wait and see what happens. I also had to add a drop of concentrated hydrochloric acid for the reaction to start. But now you can see that the copper no longer looks like regular copper and a lot more like silver. Still a little bit of the copper color is shining through but that's because the solution of mercury is very very dilute. We've shown that this solution probably contains mercury and now we can try to extract it. These four vials are all of the mercury thiocyanate solution that I have and before we start with the extraction I want to measure the total mass and volume of the solution so that I can calculate the theoretical yield. Alright, so we've got roughly 24 grams of mercury thiocyanate solution. And it looks like we also have roughly 24 milliliters of solution, so the density is about 1. In order to get the mercury metal out of solution, we're going to reduce it using aluminum foil. So those are our 100 milligrams of aluminum, and now we're going to add this in small pieces. Now we just need to wait for the aluminum to dissolve and the mercury being reduced to a metal. I will just add some hydrochloric acid right now just to make sure the reaction is going. You can see now that the water is getting murky and the aluminum is dissolving. Maybe you can even see tiny gas bubbles, that's because of the aluminum reacting with the water to form hydrogen. Here we are the next day and all of the aluminum has dissolved. The problem is, well, it's just in powdered form, so we need to somehow get it to coalesce. And for that I want to heat the solution. But the problem is that it, this might cause some of the mercury to evaporate. So I'm going to set up a distillation apparatus for that. Here is the complete distillation apparatus and now let's turn up the heat to maximum and see what happens. Either we're going to decoalesce the mercury or we're going to distill it over. The liquid just started boiling and now we can see the vapor front slowly rising. But the mercury doesn't seem to coalesce so let's just hope we can steam distill it over with the water. That would be amazing. I'm also going to add some concentrated hydrochloric acid so in case there's some aluminium left that we can be sure that it will all get dissolved. Ooh, that was maybe a bit too fast. Probably there was still some aluminium left. I think I managed to coalesce the mercury. I mean you can kind of see it here and here but it's very very hard to see it on camera. So I'm going to turn everything off now so we can take a better look at it. Okay this has all cooled down to room temperature now. So let's pour off the excess solution and try to isolate the mercury. It's amazing how clean this looks right now. Okay and this little black stuff down here this should be all of the mercury that we've we've been able to collect. It's not a lot but it's something at least. Okay so those are our actual mercury droplets and this is just some black stuff probably maybe some powdered mercury. Now let's move on to the other water analysis kit. Here is the other set of mercury containing water analysis chemicals. As I've shown previously this contains 
32 milliliters of 1% mercury to sulfate solution in 96% sulfuric acid. So this is a very different kind of medium, but I think the same procedure should still be viable for this. So this is the first thing we're going to try and let's just hope that it works. So in each of these boxes we have about 20 of these vials containing the concentrated sulfuric acid with mercury sulfate. I don't know why the solution is colored. Maybe mercury sulfate is actually a colored salt, but I'm not sure about that. So we're going to do exactly the same thing and just pour all these tiny amounts of solution in this cup. Oh no, looks like stuff has already kind of precipitated out of solution. The density of this liquid turns out to be around 1.76 to 1.79, which means it's probably a lower concentration than 96% sulfuric acid. It's actually the concentration of the sulfuric acid is actually below 90%. So the yellow color, this precipitate and the lower concentration of the sulfuric acid all indicate that the mercury sulfate has decomposed. So we're going to have to deal with this precipitate in the vials as well. But first of all, I want to reduce the remaining mercury from this solution. But this flask is a little bit too small and I'm afraid it's going to bubble over. So we will transfer it into this larger flask. And now we will dilute the acid with about 200 milliliters of distilled water. And I will just add this to the acid. This will hopefully warm it up. So you can see a nice and vigorous reaction between the concentrated sulfuric acid and the water. In order to now reduce the mercury, I'm going to add a, a bit more than a gram of aluminium. This should be a huge excess, but it's always better to use more than too little in this case. I'm going to give this a couple seconds in case this reacts too vigorously. I don't want to have a complete catastrophe right now. It looks like this is working nicely. The aluminium is dissolving slowly, but the sulfuric acid has been cooling down. You can see now the yellow color of the solution disappeared, so we've probably reduced all the mercury. But the remaining aluminium is only dissolving very slowly because the solution has now cooled down. And so in order to speed this up, we're going to heat up the solution. The solution is now back up to temperature. You can see it has gotten quite a bit more cloudy because of all the hydrogen bubbles that are forming right now. The solution is now boiling vigorously and you can see the aluminium dissolving quite quickly. You can see that it was definitely not the best idea to add such a huge excess of aluminium, but oh well. Now there are a lot of these tiny little flakes left that are not willing to dissolve, so let's see if adding some hydrochloric acid is able to fix this. You need to be very careful though. Just want to add a very tiny amount. Hmm, it doesn't seem to help. Maybe we'll just let it cool down and then try to dissolve it in pure hydrochloric acid after we've decanted off most of the liquid. So first of all we're going to have to pour off the liquid. So that's the stuff that's left at the bottom. The stuff doesn't seem to dissolve in boiling concentrated sodium hydroxide or in boiling concentrated hydrochloric acid. So the next thing we are going to try is hot sulfuric acid, but we need to try this in a distillation apparatus because I don't want to risk mercury vapors being everywhere. Also we can directly use the sulfuric acid that's already in here if we just distill off enough water. Here's the fully set up distillation apparatus. I also made it so that we can pull a vacuum in case the distillation gets too slow at the end. So let's start it up. And now let's just turn the heat to full blast and let's see what happens. Okay, so the liquid just started boiling. You can see that the water is slowly condensing right here. And it looks like we're collecting a nice and clear liquid. The boiling point is right now 100 degrees Celsius, so this should be 
basically pure water that's coming over. The temperature of the vapor has now dramatically risen to about 150 degrees Celsius and it actually looks like the stuff is now dissolving so at least we are kind of successful with that. Here you can see the insoluble or previously insoluble stuff floating on the surface on the, of the liquid and now it's vigorously dissolving. The distillation is starting to be really slow right now so at this point it's probably a good idea to pull a vacuum but before that it's obviously a smart idea to change out the receiving flask otherwise everything in your that you've already collected in your receiving flask is going to start to evaporate. Okay, vacuum setup is ready. I've set up a little absorber right here containing sodium hydroxide drain cleaner so I won't get any sulfuric acid in my vacuum pump. And now let's see if I can turn this on without everything exploding. That was a bit violent. Yeah, I need to be very careful with this. What was that? Wow, the temperature of the steam is now 260 degrees. Alright, I think we can stop the distillation at this point and see if we were able to collect any mercury. It looks like we're going to have to properly distill off all of the sulfuric acid and we are going to have to redistill this because some solid stuff actually spilled over. So I'm going to pour this back in there and I'm also going to add a star bar so we can distill off the rest of the sulfuric acid more easily under vacuum. Let's start with turning on the vacuum. It's looking good. Now let's turn on the stirring. And now the heating. It was definitely a good idea we installed this trap. As you can see it's doing a lot of work. Now that's an amazing trap right for concentrated sulfuric acid and the head temperature is only 190 degrees so this vacuum pump is really amazing. Most of the sulfuric acid is distilled off now as you can see we've collected quite a bit here. Take this apart carefully so we don't overheat stuff. It's always important. This is the round bottom flask now after it has cooled down and now we're going to try to wash this out using some 10% hydrochloric acid. Looks like this is working perfectly well. Let's now add some aluminium foil to this. And if we don't get any mercury now I'm just going to assume that there isn't actually a recoverable amount of mercury in this. Well, basically all of the mercury is still in the vials, which is that little precipitate that we saw at the beginning. There doesn't seem to be a lot happening, so let's heat this up. The aluminium is dissolving now vigorously, and let's hope that we're going to get some mercury out of that. All the aluminium has dissolved, and the solution turned a bit of a murky grey color, but I don't think that there's actually any amount of mercury in there that we can collect now. So it looks like we actually got a tiny amount of mercury out of that. This was totally worth all the effort probably. Not even sure if I can properly recover that <laughs> out of there. Okay, so the next step is going to be dissolving this precipitate right here at the bottom of the, all the tubes. That's probably the majority of all the mercury. The first thing that we are going to do is to try if this dissolves in hydrochloric acid. And let's start by adding some dilute hydrochloric acid. Now we need to shake this up. Hmm, this is not looking great. Let's try to see if it dissolves in more concentrated hydrochloric acid. So that would work. So yeah, that's what I'm probably going to do. Now we've got most of the mercury in this Elmire flask right here in solution. In order to minimize the amount of mercury that we're going to release in the environment, I want to rinse out all these vials right here with distilled water too. This is how much liquid I get from rinsing out all the vials and their caps. As you can see it's quite a lot and it's also probably quite dilute. So the first thing we're going to do is boil that down and then redissolve all the mercury with hydrochloric acid. Oh, I think I overshot a little bit. So. Alright, perfect. Now let's try to see if we can redissolve that using concentrated hydrochloric acid. 
Excellent, it's looking great. Alright, now we can add this to our other solution and then reduce the mercury again using aluminum using aluminum foil. To this we will now add about half a gram of aluminum foil. Now we should have our mercury in basically no time. All of the aluminium has dissolved now, but the solution is still quite murky. So let's see if we can get this to clear up by heating it up. Okay, so the solution started foaming quite a bit. It's also releasing huge amounts of hydrogen chloride. So it's best to stay well away from this. I've added some more distilled water and this finally stopped releasing hydrochloric acid vapors like crazy. The solution has cooled down now. And as you can see it has cleared up quite a bit. So let's now pour off the excess liquid and see if we get any mercury. Oh yeah, can you see that? This shiny droplet here. That's what I was after all the time. Mercury metal, yay! Alright, now I think it should be safe to touch. Oops. So that's probably more of an aluminium amalgam. Hmm. Wonder why the aluminium is not dissolving. Kind of has like a texture to it. Interesting question is now how do I get the remaining aluminium out? But this still looks amazingly amazing. I've decided to do a distillation in order to purify the mercury. I've set up this distillation apparatus. Those were the two smallest round button flasks I have. We're also going to do it on a vacuum. And now let's heat this on full blast with the heat gun. Mercury is starting to evaporate, but I'm not sure if the heat gun is strong enough. That should work much better, I guess. Let's see what happens. We'll also try to help this along with my blowtorch. Most of our mercury has collected right here in this spot. There are lots of tiny droplets everywhere in the apparatus. Obviously not right here, I've made sure to heat all of this enough. Let me try to collect everything now. This is all of the mercury I managed to see, so... Alright, so there was about 100 milligrams of impurities in there. I have these impur impurities right here. I mean, I was heating this with a blowtorch for like 20 minutes under vacuum. <laughs> so I doubt that there's any mercury still left in there. If I pour this on my hand now, it actually behaves and feels a lot more like real mercury. This should be now exceptionally pure mercury. Okay, so the last stuff I have to deal with is these black dusts that collected after the reduction of aluminium. Because I suspect these oils still contain some mercury. So what I want to try to do is distill this too and see if I can get some mercury condensate. I've transferred everything into this bottle now and this is basically now the solution. It's too dilute for me to extract any more mercury metal and this is all the mercury metal that we've managed to extract. So yeah, I guess that's a good result for this video. I've managed to decontaminate a lot of mercury solution and concentrate it down to this little bit. So I hope you enjoyed watching, learned a little bit about mercury chemistry. I certainly did. So with that, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed and see you all next time. Bye bye.